Hey everybody, welcome to the vlog. Welcome to day 11 of tour. Welcome to day 20 of VEDS. And uh, this is our last Campbell River morning. It's our last morning on the road at all, actually. Uh, tonight we're gonna get a couple of last shots for Etienne's big music video. That's why we're here at uh, Fog Darker's Coffee here, so he can get his sweet shot in the background. And uh, just gonna, yeah, get a couple of shots today and then we're gonna ferry on home. It's gonna be nice to be back. I'm gonna lay low for a while um, as COVID still looms large. And while we kept our groups relatively small, still should uh, do my part and lay low for a little while. But what an amazing journey this tour has been. And we got one more day today. So should be fun. Join me. <laughs> There's some beautiful uh, carvings not only here at Fog Ducker's Coffee but all along the water it's been one of the wonderful things to see about Campbell River all the times that I've been here uh, this particular one is called Creep from the Deep by uh, Keith Urchuk who's listed as a novice I think it's cool that even someone who considers themselves a novice can have a piece of theirs sit permanently as a fixture here on the shoreline. It's pretty neat. From here you can get a distant shot of what I believe is the main queen making its trip across over to uh, Quadra Island over there and also on Quadra Island you get to see this cool lighthouse that I don't believe I got to visit last time I went over to the island last May. It'd be a cool place to check out one day. We're now here at an authentic Courtney shoreline to do some filming. Plane flying by overhead. Trying to find a place that we can stand out without slipping or falling. The tide is out so freaking far. So there was an infographic back there that said that there were these ancient deposits of shells on this land that uh, date back to 3,500 3, years. After just ye years and decades and centuries of, of, of proce pro processing shellfish. And I have a feeling that that's what we're standing on because we're on this little raised area. It's all grassy and underneath the grass are just layers and layers and layers of these shells. I couldn't tell you if that's what this is, but it uh, seems possible. I'm trying to see how close to the shore I can get. I've already walked so far, and there's just like an endless beach ahead of me. And I'm also trying to make sure that the tide doesn't close in behind me while I try to do this. So, we'll see what happens. Whoa. I got all the way out to the water. And there's just this square of little wooden posts. Wow. Are these biological? Maybe. The hell? Could these be those ancient fishing areas they were talking about? I don't know. It's been like a 15 minute walk <laughs> and I'm still not at the shoreline. It just goes on forever but I'm finally just about at the waterline. I did it after an arduous journey. I made it to the shoreline, touched the water, and now I'm leaving as the tide appears to be going that way. And I don't want to get stuck out here, but I have made the arduous journey. I literally cannot see them anymore. On my way back to where they're shooting this video, I saw this poor landlocked jelly. Aww. Maybe he'll come back to life when the tide comes in. On this last day of the journey, Etienne makes one more try to catch some dinner. So at, while Et was uh, scoping out some final fishing destinations here today, we pulled up to this spot, which is just wonderful and beautiful, not only for its location, but for this. Hard to tell, but those are pieces of a shipwreck 
Fascinating. I wish that area was accessible by land. Got this feeling that it might actually be during low tide, but that it is not. We'll see how close I can get. So apparently just like that uh, breakwater of old concrete chips I was talking about in Powell River, they uh, made a breakwater out of <laughs> ships similarly here in Royston. Uh, I think over a dozen ships in total um, were laid down here um, and only a few of them still exist at all because these were these these were placed here like back in the 30s uh, as a breakwater and they haven't been adding new ships to it so it's just slowly been rotting away over the years so yeah in the early 20th century there was a major logging boom in the area uh, trains would take uh, logs to the, uh, the, the Comox Harbor and from there they would be shipped through the Strait of Georgia over to New Westminster um, and yeah this area was exposed to a lot of wind so they needed this breakwater built in uh, while it is an ugly <laughs> sort of site I guess for some people it's a really it's a very physical reminder of the, the old industry that this town used to thrive on. Very neat. You can see just a small fragment of one still sitting there on its side. Many more in the distance. There, uh, one up there, wow. And then the largest piece off in the distance. They, uh, there's a whole catalog of all the ships that were sort of laid to rest here. I'm not that good at identifying them or which is which, but apparently some of the ships that are probably underneath the waterline now here uh, were built even in the 1800s, so there's a lot of history rotting away here. It's hard to tell, but I think that this right here might be like either a mast fragment from that ship or just another last standing piece of another one of the shipwrecks still there. It'd be neat to get out here at totally low tide to see what you can see. In 1876, in Liverpool, um, an Australasian shipping company built a three-masted ship, the Menelope, or the Menelope, uh, the crewmen that used to be on that ship disliked it as they thought that it was somehow haunted. Uh, it was used for like three or four decades until like 1910 and, and, or 1920 or somewhere in there and it was eventually sold to the Canadian Pacific Railway and is just somewhere in there if any pieces of it still exist at all. It could have 100% rotten away by now. really impossible to know. It's little details like that that are really freaking fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> it's got something. Oh, got oh, did it? Just a little one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Got something. I got something. All right. the last ferry of the tour. So sad. I know. <sighs> I don't want it to be over. No. Alright, so we're on board the Queen of Oak Bay. And her sister is right next to us, the Queen of Cowichan. Her five years older sister ship built in 1976. This one circa 1981, both from the same class. Goodbye Nanaimo, goodbye Vancouver Island. Excited to be back home. But very sad that this journey is coming to an end. Hey guys, Future Graham here. About six days in the future, to be exact. Uh, I'm just actually editing the vlog you have just seen and I realized that uh, for some reason my computer corrupted the, the last file of this vlog where I talked about all the awesome memories we made during the tour. And uh, yeah, I just really did want to have a little segment thanking you guys for watching all of these tour vlogs. Uh, this is the fourth time I've done a tour um, of any kind, and it's so amazing that I was able to do this monumental journey in 2020 of all times. 
so yeah i just wanted to say thank you so much for watching um it's been a blast uh, i am glad to be home though now uh tomorrow i will upload my tour recap video where i talk to etienne and uh we recap all of our wonderful stories from out on the road. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the description for links to uh, the channels for my wonderful other fellow Vedsies, as well as links to where you can find my own music and Etienne's music where it can be sold or streamed online. Uh, like this video if you like what you saw. Subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying my videos. Ring the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you again tomorrow and every day for the rest of this month.